Hello everyone, welcome to yet another exciting video by Simply Learn. Today we will go on a quest to uncover commonly asked logical reasoning questions in an aptitude test and the topics they are based on. We will go through all these details one by one, so stay tuned until the end of this video. At first, we shall look into the agenda for today's session. The section that carries more weightage in logical reasoning tests are coding and decoding, sitting arrangement, series completion, direction sense, blood relations, clock and calendar based questions. We will delve over details of all these categories one by one. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. The first topic we are going to cover is coding and decoding. This section is one of the most common sections included in all major exams conducted across the country. Many students find coding and decoding questions quite difficult. Thus, they avoid attempting these scoring questions and thereby lose some easy and quick marks. We'll look into the basics of these concepts to elevate our chances of tackling these questions. First, let's understand coding. Coding is a part of logical reasoning section used to encrypt words, numbers in specific pattern or codes using particular rules and regulations. In more technical terms, it is also referred to as encryption and it is widely used across all messaging platforms to protect the context that user are communicating. The logic that these encryptions follow is known as key which can cipher the context in no time. Let's have a look at an example to comprehend this better. The problem statement given here states that in a certain language, kinomotophobia is written as K N I E A M R O T P O H B A I. Then how hilarious will be written in the same language? The logic to answer this question is engraved in the conversion of kinomotophobia to K N I E A M R O T P O H B A I. So let's take these words to our workplace and figure out the logic. Now, if you compare both these strings with one another, then you'll see that the logic of encryption is pretty clear. After every character, the next two characters are interchanging their positions. As we have found the logic of coding here, so the next step will be to apply it to the question string that is hilarious. So let's do that. The first letter will regain its position and for the second position, we'll have L and then I. After that, we'll keep L as it is and then we'll interchange position of A and R. Next characters will be I, U, O and S. Thus, the answer to this question should be H, L, I, L, R, A, I, U, O, S. On that note, here is a similar question for all of you to gauge your understanding of the concept. The problem statement and alternatives are given on your screens. So make sure to solve this problem and drop your answers in the comment box below. Let's see how many of us can get this right. Next we have is decoding. Decoding is the process used to decrypt the patterns into original forms. In other words, to achieve decoding, you'll require the logic of encoding. So the first thing you'll have to do in this type of questions is to find the key of encryption or the logic behind encoding. Let's look into the sample question to understand how these kind of problems work. The problem statement states that in a certain language, the word book is written as 4300, mate is written as 3900, then 1600 will represent which word out of the given alternatives. Here we have been provided with two examples representing the logic of encoding. So let's look into each one of them one by one. First, we'll look at the encryption of word book. The word book has been converted into numerical format. So there must be some sort of relation between alphabetical numbering and number 4300. So what we'll do is we'll take the reference from this alphabetically ordered list. The characters B, O and K have position values 2, 15 and 11. And if you sum all these values, you'll get number 43. I don't think there is any logic behind those two trailing zeros. But we'll look into one more encoding example to ensure that. The next string is mate, which is encrypted as 3900. In this case, character M-A-T-E 
have alphabetical positioning values 13 1 20 and 5 simultaneously and the summation of these values will be 39 meaning the logic that we have found out is the appropriate one from the previous two coding examples we can say that the right answer should have 16 as a character summation value and the only option that has 16 character summation value is cage which is option 4 in this scenario next we have its sitting arrangement these questions involve arranging the persons or objects according to the conditions given in a question you'll have to understand the seating sequence direction is the person facing inwards or outwards etc to be able to conclude the answer these sorts of questions include straight line seating arrangement complex seating arrangements such as circular rectangular and triangular arrangements first we'll solve the sample problem based on the linear seating arrangement the problem statement conveys that a p r x s and z are sitting in a row s and z are in the center a and p are at the edge r is sitting to the left of a then who is the right of s from the first statement itself we can say that we are supposed to arrange six persons in a straight line the next statement says that s and z are sitting at the center so we'll place them in the center part of straight line moving forward the problem statement says that a and p are sitting at the end of our straight line so we'll arrange them as well the next statement says that r is sitting to the left of a but as there is no left position to the a will interchange position of a and p and now certainly we can add person r to the left of a now there is only one position left so we'll place x over that position as all the persons are arranged in a straight line we can draw an inference about who is sitting to the right of s and the answer to this question is z moving ahead we'll look at the sample question of circular sitting arrangement the problem statement given here states that P, Q, R, S, T, U and V are sitting around a circular table facing the center and there are three conditions that emphasize more about the positions around the circle. The first one says that R is next to the left of U and V is second to the left of R. The next condition entails that P is sitting third to the left of T and the last condition says that Q is between S and T. By utilizing all these three conditions, we are supposed to find out alternative pair that has the first person sitting to the immediate left of the second person. Let's formulate a solution to this problem. At first, we'll add a circular shape and we'll also place six placeholder onto it, representing the six person sitting in a circular pattern. Now, looking at first condition, we'll fix the position of R at any random placeholder to figure out the position of other people. Reading the half part of first statement that is R is next to the left of U, you can draw an inference that U should be the right of R. So, we'll assign the position to U as well. Moving ahead, let's deal with the other half of first statement. It says that V is second to the left of R. Thus, at the second left position of R, we'll place V. Going to the second condition, which says that Q is between S and T, that means to place Q, S and T will certainly need three empty positions close to each other and there is only one group with three empty positions, that is between V and U. Hence, we'll add S, T and Q there. Also, the second condition of our list says that P is sitting to the third to the left of T. Now, by measuring the third left location from T, we'll add P to our circular arrangement. We have formulated the arrangement pattern. So, let's dig up the right answer from all presented alternatives. The first option we have is QT. If you look at this option, you'll see that Q is sitting to the right of T. Hence, we'll remove this option from our list. Then we have option RP and here also R is to the right of P. So we'll remove this option as well. Then we have SV and S is available at the left position of V. Hence SV is the right answer for our question.
on that note here is a similar question for all of you guys to gauge your understanding of sitting arrangement concept the problem statement and alternatives are given on your screens so make sure to solve this problem and drop your answers in comment box below let's see how many of us can get this question right having said that let's move to the next category that is series completion questions in this section the candidate is interested with recognizing a pattern in a given set of numbers or letters then he'll have to pick up an option that follows the same pattern otherwise he'll have to identify the term that does not perfectly match the logic of given sequence there are three types of sequences you'll come across in this series completion questions first one is alphanumeric second one is alphabetic and third one is numeric sequences the main task you'll have to carry out is identifying the logic engraved in this set of numbers or characters let's look into the sample problem of series completion the first problem of series completion is based on numerical sequencing and the sequence that we have been provided with is 8 6 9 23 and 87 let's take these numbers on our workspace to formulate an answer now if you observe these terms you won't find any direct pattern so let's break these numbers we can derive the second term from the first one by subtracting 2 from it but this pattern won't make sense for upcoming terms so what if we represent it as 8 multiplied by 1 minus 2 now let's try to relate this pattern to our next term here if we represent it as 6 into 2 minus 3 then we'll get third number of our sequence this suggests that we are increasing each breakdown by 1 Let's take nine now. Nine into three minus four is twenty-three, and similarly, twenty-three into four minus five is eighty-seven. This means the pattern that we have found is correctly appropriate. Therefore, the next term will be eighty-seven into five minus six, which is nothing but four twenty-nine. Let's look into one more problem for series completion. This time, the type of sequence we have is alphabetical. which goes like w f b t g d q h g and question mark here we are supposed to find out the alternative that can replace the question mark sign so let's bring this sequence into our workspace to figure out an answer the logic for alphabetical sequence is most frequently embedded in the numerical ordering hence let's bring an alphabetic numeric table to consider their orders now using the table values we'll figure out consecutive sequencing for each character in all three terms now if you look closely at each first character numbering for all three terms you'll see the pattern 23 minus 3 is 20 20 minus 3 is 17 and 17 minus 3 should be the next character that is with sequence number 14 and that should be the character n Now let's figure out the middle character of our next term. Here, if you observe, G is one place forward to that of F. Similarly, in third term, we have H, which is again one place larger than G. And by abiding by this logic, the middle term for our next term should be one place greater than H, which is nothing but I. Finally, let's discover the final character for our next term. Here. If you observe each character increases linearly with the value 1 hence the final character should be four places greater than g which is k in this case now by compiling all these characters that we have figured out we'll get the right answer to our question which is option b n i k moving forward we'll look into the alphanumeric series problem the sequence given here starts like z1 a x2 d v6 g t21 j r88 m and p445 p so we'll take this sequence on our workspace to figure out what this series is all about we'll break each term into three parts and we'll arrange it in tabular format let's first figure out the logic behind starting characters if you observe this set of characters you'll see that each step one character has been omitted we have z and x in this set 
where y has been omitted. Similarly, we have v and t and the middle character out of them that is u has been omitted. And if we apply the same logic, the next character should be n. Let's figure out the last letter. In this case, two characters have been omitted for each inclusion. After A, we have D and after D, we have G, which means we have omitted BC and ES. In accordance with the same logic, we'll discard the character Q and R and we'll include character S into our table. Finally, let's discover the middle part of our next term. Here, each term is multiplied and added to the previous term with the increment of 1. For example, the second term equals to the previous term into 1 plus 1. The third term is equal to the second term into 2 plus 2, which is 6. Next term is the third term into 3 plus 3, which is 18 plus 3, which is 21. Similarly, the following term should be 21 into 4 plus 4 which equals 88. By following the same sequence logic, we can say that the next term should be 445 into 6 plus 6, which is nothing but 2676. That means our answer is option 2. Following this, we have direction signs. There are four main directions, east, west, north and south. Also. There are four cardinal directions such as northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. The questions in this section will test your understanding of these directions. You may also be asked to compute the shortest feasible distance between the starting and ending points. We'll look at one sample question to get an idea about the question. The problem statement given here states that from his house, Lokesh went 15 km to the north. Then he turned to his left and covered 10 km. Then he turned to south and covered 5 km. Finally, turning to his left, he covered 10 km. In which direction is he from his house? Let's figure out an answer to this question by tracing each statement. First of all, we will add a direction plot to make sure we get the answer plot right. The first statement states that Lokesh went to 15 km north. This also means that will add a line in upward direction, marking it with a distance of 15 km. The next statement says that, after covering 15 km towards north, he turned to his left and covered extra 10 km. His left side is west, so we'll add a straight line in that direction. The third statement conveys that, Lokesh turned to the south and walked 5 km. And further, he turned to his left and covered 10 km more. Now, if you trace his current location from the starting point, that is his home, you'll see that it is in north direction. So, the right alternative for our question is option 3. The next topic is blood relations. The questions which are asked in this section depend upon relation. So, you should have a sound knowledge of blood relations in order to solve these questions. Let's look at one sample question to get an idea about how these blood relationship questions work. The problem statement given here states that introducing to a boy, a girl said, he is the son of the daughter of the father of my uncle. How is the boy related to that girl? Let's figure out an answer to this question by breaking the problem statement into chunks. We'll start tracing the problem statement from backward direction. The highlighted part says father of my uncle and uncle's father is nothing but the grandfather. This grandfather has a daughter. So we'll add that daughter here and this daughter has a son whom this girl is referring to now. This means the guy in the picture is girl's brother which is option one. The next topic is clock. The questions in this section are based on time and clocks. You'll come across questions such as measurement of angles between hands of clock, coincidence between hands of clocks, time when particular angle between hands of clock is given, time lost in a pulse watch, etc. Let's understand the concept of clock first. In a watch, 
a second hand cover 360 degrees within 60 seconds. How much angles do you think a minute hand will cover? Well, a minute is nothing but 60 seconds. So, if we divide the measurement of a complete clock by 60, then we should get the angle covered by a minute hand. And 360 by 60 is nothing but 6 degrees. So, 6 degrees will be the angle covered by minute hand in 1 minute. Similarly, if you compute angle covered by R and in 1 minute, that is 360 divided by 12 hours into the conversion of an R into minute, that is 60, which will further result into 1 by 2. Now, we know that both the minute hand and R and will move in same direction, that is in a clockwise direction. Hence, we can also compute the relative angular displacement which will be nothing but the comparison of difference between the angular displacement of both these hands of clock per minute. So, doing that, which is 6 minus 1 by 2, will get 11 by 2 as an answer. This is angular displacement per minute. Now, if we multiply this value by 60, we will get an angular displacement per hour, which is 330 degree. Also, any angle more than 180 degrees is called as reflex angles. And in solving clock questions, we always try to refrain from reflex angles. So, we will convert this angle into non-reflex angles. To do that, all you have to do is subtract the value from 360. Doing that, we will get 30 degrees as a non-reflex angle value. Moving ahead, by using formulas we derived by angular displacement per hour and per minute, we can formulate the formula for an angle between hands of a clock and that will be mod of 30h minus 11 by 2m. h here is r value and m here is nothing but minute value. Let's look into a sample problem to comprehend the application of this formula. The problem statement asks us to evaluate the angle between hands of clock when the time is 5.30. The answer to this question is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is the fill value in equation. The h value is 5 in this case and m value is 30. Now 30 into 5 will be 150 and 11 by 2 into 30 will be 11 by 50. After further computation we will get 15 as an answer. We will look at one more type of clock question. The question given here says that a clock loses 3 minutes for every hour it works which is set at right 8 am. What will be the actual time when the clock shows 12 noon on the third day? Let's look at this problem statement closely. It says that a clock loses 3 minutes every hour. That means 1 hour is equal to 57 minutes. Also, this false clock started at 8 am and stopped at 12 noon after 3 days. So the number of hours completed by a false clock is 24 into 3 that is 3 days plus extra 4 hours between 8 am to 12 noon, which equals to 76 hours overall. Now, we want to find out the hours covered by true clock in order to predict the accurate time. And we know that our false clock has covered 76 hours, where each hour equal to 57 minutes. From this, we can say that the true time will be 76 into 60 divided by 57. This equation will give us the right hours covered by the clock which is 80 hours and since the time covered by the true clock is 80 hours, we'll have to add an extra 4 hours time to 12 am. Hence, our answer will be 4 pm. On that note, here is a sample question to check your understanding of clock concept. All of you guys can solve this question and drop your answers in the comment box below. To do that, I'll provide you with a short moment. I hope that all of you guys have solved this question and dropped your answers in the comment box below by now. Moving forward, we'll discuss the section of calendar and date based questions. The questions in this section will test your understanding of the calendar concepts. Here, we'll face questions based on leap year, odd days, a day on a particular date, etc. 
Let's look at the sample question to figure out how questions in this section can be printed. The problem statement given here is asking us to find out what day there will be on the date 20th April 2040. Now let me tell you, we can figure out an answer to this question within 30 seconds by using a really interesting trick. This trick begins by breaking down the given data into 5 sections. For whom, we will compute odd days which will finally lead us towards the day evaluation. And those 5 sections are days, months, century, ordinary year and leap year. Let's understand how we can figure out the answer using this data. So, we have a date value as 20. Then we have month as April. Then we have century as 2000 and ordinary year is 40 and leap year now what is a leap year well you must know that leap year occurs after cycle of four years and if we divide the ordinary year value by four then we should get the leap year value which is 40 by 4 and 10 in this case now we'll move towards the next step which is nothing but the odd day calculation first We'll figure out odd days for the date section. In a week, we usually have 7 days. Thus, odd days can be considered as the remainder of number of days by week days, which will be the remainder of 20 by 7 in our case. And that is 6. For next two factor, that is month and century, we have predefined odd day values. So, moving forward, we'll discover them. These are the odd day values for month. You'll have to remember these values to be able to answer these type of questions using this trick. Let's also look into the odd day values for centuries. These values work the same in forward direction as well as the backward direction. What this means is for century 2100 to 2199, you'll again have odd day value as 4. For 2200 to 2299, you'll have an odd day value equal to 2. I hope this is clear to all of you guys. From these tables, we can add the odd day values for our month and century section. For month, we have odd day value as 6 and for century, we have odd day value as minus 1. Now, the only part left is ordinary year and leap year. And if you remember, in an ordinary year, we have only one odd day and in a leap year, we always have two odd dates. So, according to this logic, we'll add 40 odd days for ordinary year and we have covered leap years inside these ordinary years as well. So, we'll add only 10 odd days for leap year section. Again, here 40 and 10 are greater than 7. So, we'll divide them by 7 in order to calculate other odd day values. Now, remainder of 40 by 7 is 5 and remainder of 10 by 7 is 3. So, we'll replace these values. Now, the next step will be adding these odd days. And if you add these odd values, you'll get 19 as an output. And again, we'll divide this 19 by 7, which will be 5. So, the day number should be 5 on that date. And here is the code for each day and 5 is given to Friday. So answer to this question should be Friday. I hope this is clear to all of you guys out there. And that's all we have for this logical reasoning presentation. Thank you very much for being there and wish you all the very best for your aptitude preparation. Thank you for watching the video and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.